My name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on the subject of atrial fibrillation and in particular I wanted to try and answer a question that a lot of people ask me and causes a lot of people a lot of concern and that is what are the chances my atrial fibrillation will progress and become permanent? Okay, so as you may know um, uh, there are different types of atrial fibrillation uh, but the one that causes a lot of bother is paroxysmal atrial fibrillation in which people develop um, sudden episodes of atrial fibrillation where their heart beats fast, they feel very uncomfortable, it really uh, knocks um, them for six, you know, they feel completely washed out, it's very scary, uh, they are breathless, they're tired, they're getting the palpitations and then they have to wait for the rhythm to settle and go back to normal of its own accord. And people feel so terrible during these episodes that their biggest fear is, what if my atrial fibrillation becomes permanent? What if I go into the atrial fibrillation and they can't get me out of the atrial fibrillation or it doesn't come out by itself? Uh, won't I just feel so awful all the time and how terrible would that be? And the answer is that the first thing to say is that it is surprising how well people tolerate permanent or persistent atrial fibrillation. Um, uh, there are lots of people uh, walking around in atrial fibrillation constantly who don't even know they're in atrial fibrillation. For a lot of people with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, the big problem is this unpredictable jump from um, a normal rhythm to an abnormal rhythm where the heart is beating very fast and uh, because it's so unpredictable and they 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 know what normal feels like, abnormal feels really, really horrible. However, when people go into persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation, the uh, irregular rhythm becomes their normal rhythm and the body adapts and there are no more sudden unpredictable jumps. And the majority of treatment is it's then geared towards just making sure that their heart doesn't race whilst it's in atrial fibrillation all the time and this is done using things like beta blockers uh, and most people tolerate their atrial fibrillation a lot better when they're in permanent atrial fibrillation than they may think when they're in paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. So that's the first thing, it's not as horrible as it may initially seem. Uh, the second thing is that I wanted obviously to try and answer the question what are the chances or what is the likelihood of a person who is in paroxysmal atrial fibrillation going into persistent atrial fibrillation or permanent atrial fibrillation. And a bunch of studies have looked at this, but in particular, there's something called the Canadian AF registry, where they've uh, taken about 750 patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation and studied them over a number of years to see what the percentage of people who go into permanent atrial fibrillation is over that number of years. And basically what they've found is that um, at um, one year, the rate of going into permanent atrial fibrillation is 8%. So 8% of patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation will go into permanent atrial fibrillation at one year. At uh, two years, it's 12%. At four years, it's 18%. At five years, it's 25%. So one in four people will go into permanent atrial fibrillation by five years. And at 10 years, it's 36%. So really, where um, we think that, oh, if you have a paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, it is um, a guarantee that you will go into permanent atrial fibrillation, the studies haven't proven this. And what we know is that about a one in three, you know, 36% will become permanent at the end of 10 years, okay? Um, in terms of who is more likely to go into permanent atrial fibrillation, one, those people who have bigger atria, so uh, the normal left atrial size is about four centimeters. If your atria are bigger than five centimeters, then there's a much higher chance of you going into permanent atrial fibrillation. Increasing age confers a risk. If you have high blood pressure, if you have heart failure, if you have valve disease, in particular, if you have uh, mitral stenosis, rheumatic mitral stenosis, where one, the mitral valve becomes uh, abnormally narrowed, or aortic stenosis, or even if you have a leaky mitral valve, 
then that confers a higher risk of going into permanent atrial fibrillation. But uh, basically what I'm trying to get across here is that the, the, the rate of progression is 1 in 3 at 10 years. And uh, actually, when people do go into persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation, they tolerate it a lot better than they thought. All right, so I hope this reassures you. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. As my work is getting busier, I don't get to answer all of them, but I do try. Um, and I'm hoping that someday I'll have some days off from work and I'll be able to answer them all. Um, now, it would mean a ton to me if you'd consider sharing the videos. And I'm so desperate that the channel gains more popularity, particularly in places like um, India and um, you know other developing countries where there may not be that much access to help, good healthcare. Um, and uh, the other thing to say is I'm now on Instagram where I do these short sharp videos of one minute on health issues or heart issues. Um, I have a new website www.drsanjayguptacardiologist.com and there are lots of patient stories and I'm always very keen to hear patient stories and I can publish them on that website so that other people may benefit. And finally, if you wanted to talk to me, you can do so using my website, www.yourcardiology.co.uk. Thank you so much. Have a great night. All the best.